Hello, this is Dwayne Youngblood again from Be Wealthy 2. And today I'm talking to people born between 1965 and 1996. You make up two groups, one called Generation X, born 1965 to 1980. The other one are millennials, born from 1981 to 1996. I want to talk to you because I want you to be a millionaire at least when you're retirement age. And in this particular video today, we're gonna to see exactly how to get there. We need you to review some stuff in order to make that happen. So I wanna to begin today by going through some things that I think are very, very essential and important. And I'm gonna go back and forth between a couple of things. One, there was a some research done and I wanna share this with you. There was some research done uh, by Investopedia. They did a survey asking 1,400 people born between 1981 and 1996 who had a median income of 132. So, so somewhere in that 1,405, that median income was uh, $132,000. They asked them to share how they view investing, who taught them and how that education influences where they spend, save, and invest. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this this way is because these are considered to be the more affluent people born between 81 and 96. Now, maybe you're watching this and you have nowhere near $132,000 a year. This is all the more reason why you need to watch this. If you're a Generation Xer like I am, born from 65 to 80, you really need to watch this on today because I want you to be a millionaire by the time it's time to retire. Now look at this. They th This group believe that retirement is the number one reason to invest. So 64% of them uh, prioritize re retirement over paying down debts or living comfortably over paying down debts. They were, this is all the way they thought retirement is important. But in spite, look at here, despite this 46% say they aren't saving enough it's the number one activity they say they need to do more of. Now, this is this is bad. 39% expect to be forced to work beyond retirement age. 12% of this group of 1,400 uh, affluent millennials don't contribute to any retirement fund at all. This is a bad start. Something else about this. Now, here's something that's known. Financial knowledge encourages confidence and engagement. It just happens. So starting over here to our left, those who feel knowledgeable are five times more likely to feel confident about making financial decisions. If you feel knowledgeable, you're more likely to feel confident. Going around this, those who feel confident are three times as likely to say they're highly engaged with their personal finances. So confidence somehow produces engagement. Moving on around, those who engage daily are two times as likely to feel knowledgeable. So I want you to see something. Knowledge is the key that gets you into your financial life. But look at this bottom. But only 37% of affluent millennials do feel knowledgeable. That's bad because that means if confidence is the thing that gets you engaging and confidence is birthed from knowledge, and only 37% of affluent millennials feel knowledgeable, you can expect that this group will not be investing. And that's not gonna work. Affluent millennials have time on their side, but invest as cautiously as Generation X people do. Now let's compare affluent millennials uh, to Generation Xers when it comes to stock. This first column here, 37% have stocks, those that do invest, and 47% of Generation Xers that invest uh, have stocks. Uh, this is not a good thing because this group is younger and is going to need to make more as it goes along. So the ones that are investing aren't putting their money in stock. Here over this column, and just as likely to have conservative investments. So even though they're investing, they're in bonds, they're in CDs, annuities, and high yield savings. Meaning that you're younger, you should be taking more risk but this group that is investing is not taking more risk. I am telling you, this is the product of a lack of knowledge. 
percent with funds allocated to traditional savings account. 21% of millennials got their funds allocated to a traditional savings. Listen, with the dollar decreasing in value, having your money in savings is literally costing you. In addition to that, a percent with low risk portfolios, meaning that they're investing in very safe things. 36% of those millennials that are investing are investing in low risk portfolios. Now, millennials know they should invest, but they believe investing is responsible, smart, and necessary, but it's also intimidating, risky, overwhelming, complicated. So knowledgeable millennials are slightly more likely to select the positive associations and significant less likely to select the negative. So when you don't have knowledge, you think investing is intimidating. You think it's risky. You think it's overwhelming. You think it's complicated. And what this does is it sets you behind uh, to be a person who cannot succeed in the investing game. I want you to see some information that I think uh, can, can help you see why you've got to do this. This was in the Bloomberg uh, News on uh, Friday, uh, Thursday, October the 8th, this was published. And I'm just giving you a part of this uh, story. I'm gonna read here, it says, the Fed data also show that the millennial generation born between 1981 in 1996 controlled just 4.6% of US wealth, even though they are the largest in the workforce with 72 million members. The share of the pie held by black Americans is the same size it was 30 years ago. Now let's keep reading. Like the country as a whole, young Americans wealth is concentrated in just a few hands. Three millennials, Facebook Inc. co-founders Mark Zuckerberg and Duskin Mokoskvi, along with Walmart Inc. heirs Lucas Walton, personally, three people control one out of every $40 held by their generational cohort. So three people own one out of every $40 that is held by millennials. The pandemic is further widening divides in wealth and economic mobility. Fed Chair Jerome Powell said Tuesday, warning that the country's recovery will weaken without more government aid. A long period of unnecessarily slow progress could continue to exacerbate existing disparities in our economy. economy. A few hours after his address, President Donald Trump told negotiators to halt with congressional Democrats on other relief packages until after the election. Now, I wanna look at this, keep, I wanna keep reading this because it's important, tech fortunes. Those whose fortunes are tied to tech companies, which profited from the shift of work, shopping, entertainment, and socializing online have been among the biggest beneficiaries of the COVID-19 economy. Leading the way is amazon.com founder, Jeff Bezos. His fortune, the world's biggest, has jumped 64% in 2020 to $188.5 billion. On Wednesday alone, Bezos added more than $5 billion to his net worth. White Americans hold 83.9% of the nation's wealth compared with 4.1% of black for black households, the data show. While white Americans' share of the total has dropped somewhat as the nation becomes more diverse, black people hold the same percentage as in 1990. Now listen, of the rich, 25 richest Americans, only one is non-white, Eric Yon, the chief executive officer of Zoom Video Communications, Inc., whose fortune has risen almost sevenfold this year to 24.2 billion. Baby boomers hold the majority of US wealth. These are people that were born before 65 with 59.6 trillion, twice Generation X, which is my generation, 65 to 80, 28.5 trillion, and more than 10 times millennials, 5.2 trillion. This is not good. The Fed data shows that Generation X, those born between 1965 and 1980, has made some progress building wealth in recent years, doubling their collective net worth since mid-2016. Now, my generation we have doubled our collective net worth since 2016, but it's not unusual for younger age groups to be significantly poorer than the elders. Even so, millennials remain far behind where previous generations were at the same age. 
1989, when the median boomer was 34, the generation controlled more than 21% of US wealth. To match that, millennials with a median age of 32 now will need to quadruple their wealth share over the next couple of years. This is not good. Young and lower income workers got a glimmer of hope in recent years as median wages started to rise faster than inflation. But this year, a spike in unemployment threatens to derail this progress, returning the US to the trend of the past few decades when wealth has flowed steadily to the top. Steadily to the top. The Fed estimates the top 10% of U.S. households hold 69% of the country's wealth, or 77.3 trillion, up from 60.9% share at the end of the 1980s. The very richest Americans are almost entirely responsible for that game. The top 1% held 30.5% of U.S. wealth in June, up from 23.7% in late 1989. The bottom half share, meanwhile, has fallen from 3.6% to 1.9%. What am I saying to you here today? I am telling you, it is going to be very bad in your future. If you've been born between 1981 and 1996, you are part of a generation that is behind where people your age were 20 years ago, 30 years ago, as far as it comes to building wealth. If you are Generation Xer, my generation, born in 65 to 1980, our generation has come up in the last four and a half years. But many people that may be watching me that are African-American have not come up when it comes to building true wealth. So what do we have to do? We've got to get involved. This wealth is being built in the stock market. This wealth is being built by making solid investments in companies that are going to take you where you want to go. My encouragement to you is that you've got to get knowledge though, because just throwing a dart in the dark is not going to work for you. A lot of people are, are getting open to the idea of what Cash App offers in investing, and I talk about it, what Robinhood offers in investing, and I talk about it. You can invest through Stash, but I'm telling you what's going to make you take charge and be a millionaire by the time you're ready to retire is that you've got to increase your knowledge. Now, I, I am certain that you can do it, I am certain that you've got to do it. I am certain that you are going to suffer if you do not get it done because we've all got to do it. Now, I wanna give you some uh, advice because only when you get this advice uh, can you be successful. And what is my advice to you now? Number one, get the knowledge you need to move forward. You gotta get this knowledge. Uh, you gotta see getting that knowledge as an investment in your future. Three, once you begin to know, you got to start investing. Listen, I'm telling you right now, if you're a, a millennial born between 81 and 96, and you have nothing invested, you're behind. You're not behind others. You're behind where you need to be for your own future. If you're born in 1965 to 1980 and you don't have anything, you're behind and the clock is ticking on us and we've got to get ourselves moving. Some of you, I was born in 66. I'm at the early stage of the Generation X. You've really got to get it moving. There's no time to play. So number four, what I want you to do, you got to start number one by going to my website, bewealthy2.com and start taking classes. And then I've got a stock investing playlist of about 15 different videos that I've put out just on stock investing, just so you can start hearing terms, start looking at companies. Listen, it's going to cost you nothing but time. After you invest time, you then begin to invest money so that you can get yourself where you want to be. Well, I'm convinced of it. If you were born between 1965 and 1996, you want to be a millionaire by the time you retire. You have got to get yourself off of your sideline mindset about building wealth. And you've got to get knowledgeable now. And you've got to begin to invest now. And you can't take people's advice who are not in the game, who don't have a clue, who don't know what they're doing. I'm here to coach you forward, to encourage you forward, to get in the game. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to learn something just by beginning to get involved. I'm excited. I have an opportunity to teach a stock class to my family members. And we've got family members that participate every week. 
and just getting this information, getting into the game. So we're all in these generational brackets. Uh, some of us are baby boomers, some are generation Xers, and some are millennials, but we're all coming together around this knowledge that, listen, it is my responsibility to build wealth so that my generations can prosper. Well, I'm so excited and glad that I've had this opportunity to share this video with you today. Pass it to somebody else who's sitting on the sidelines, born between 65 and 96, and they're doing nothing. They're caught up in other people's lives, other people's stories, watching what other people do to be successful, buying shoes and clothes that are making other people rich and have no plan for their own future, gossiping and backbiting and talking about everybody and their mama, but have no plan for the future. Not only are we not doing anything, we're not teaching our children to do anything, we're not modeling anything for them, and yet we spend, 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 spend. If you're an African American and you're watching me, a dollar bill in the African American community leaves fast. It quickly goes into the hands of somebody else. We've got to change that if we're going to be successful. Well, I ask you to subscribe to this channel. I ask you to like this video, help my analytics. We're growing a page here that's going to help effectively help 30 million people around this globe who are urban citizens to come to a place of financial independence. And we're helping them all over the place and all of our social media. Look in the description of this video. You will find some good things to help you there. But I'm telling you what, my charge to you today is be wealthy too. And do not allow people to distract you from what you rightly deserve. You have a great day.